What's up and welcome! Sal here, jumping right into the speed paint of Sonic the Hedgehog characters. And we gotta go fast, there's so much to do and talk about and share, like how these sketches gave me so much trouble. Sketching is both a fun and frustrating stage for me. You can watch me change the pose for Sonic and the others and redraw things constantly while creating this. Now normally I skip to the coloring stage for drawing videos because that's the fun part for me. But this time I wanted to share every drawback of drawing when you're not feeling your finest. Hopefully it can encourage you to keep drawing even if you don't like how it's turning out and to not be too harsh on yourself when things aren't going the way you want them to go. These past few weeks have been crazy and I've been producing more designs and redesigns than speed paints or drawing tip videos. And I'm still working on my animations. So this time, I wanted to relax and recharge with a speed paint of a few simple Sonic characters in different outfits. Nothing too complex, but still interesting I hope. And I'm changing up my style just a bit by adding more lines for this. Just cause it's great to break free of your routine once in a while, you know? It keeps things exciting. Naturally, it's easier to do this when you're at ease. If we're too serious about what we're creating, we'll get stiff and stressy. So it's important to allow ourselves to change or redraw things and take away that pressure. Erasers exist for a reason. We're not robots, we get tired, we make mistakes. So give yourself a break and have fun and draw whatever you want to create. As I'm sure I've mentioned before, I've never actually beaten a Sonic the Hedgehog video game. However, I'm still a fan of the characters and their designs and this franchise. Now for a tiny time jump because I accidentally hit the record button twice and that stops the recording. It also didn't help that I made a mistake while putting together my computer. It was my first time ever assembling a computer piece by piece, so there were a few hiccups. But I'm happy to say it's working like a dream now. There's still a few more updates and programs to install, like you can see in the bottom right corner of this recording there's a message telling me to activate my windows, but I'll get to that later. Setting up my drawing tablet and Wi-Fi so I can upload this video was more important. Just take it one step at a time. And I'm on to the next step, which is laying down the flat colors for these characters. And for anyone wondering what flat colors means, it's just to refer to colors that have no shading or highlighting, they're just flat color. <laughs> flat colors are fun for me because this is where my drawings really take shape. Plus, I get to play with color palettes. Like, each of their gloves is a different kind of off-white specific to their coloring. Colors that relate to each other in some way feel more soothing on the eyes and look like they belong together, so I always try to add color to white or black too so it's not so harsh. Often I'll sketch over these shapes or leave notes for myself to refine them further, so the sketching continues for me even during the coloring stage. While I'm focusing on the clothes for these drawings, I try to keep the poses of the characters really static so you can see their clothing clearly. Very few fashion models pose like an action hero for this very reason, but I still wanted these characters to be holding an item so there was a small sense of interaction or movement to help make them feel alive. It's very subtle, but I find these types of poses are more impacting than just standing there. Seriously, I've been drawing forever and I still have my off days. But but but, it's not about not making mistakes, it's about knowing what to do about them. This could mean redrawing or changing parts or just making everything look intentional. Regardless, it's this way of thinking that I believe helps us draw with more confidence and forgiveness, and that makes things much easier. So even though this was supposed to be about the clothes, I couldn't resist giving them extra accessories too. On Amy's backpack, there's a little Chow charm from Sonic Adventures for GameCube. Chow were these cute little creatures in the game who would change form depending on how you raise them up. Sadly, I never got far enough in the game to explore it much, but it was a fun system. There was also a classmate of mine who would wear metal rings and spirals in her hair, and I thought it was so awesome. It inspired me to give Sonic a few too, despite him not actually having hair. A lot of these colors are placeholders because I'm just finding all the shapes and lines of the characters before polishing them up. What looks great as a sketch doesn't always look great in color, but you need those initial guidelines to help figure out your drawing. Trust me, I've tried skipping to just the coloring stage and my drawings always come out wonky. So having a sketch to plan out your drawing, clean or messy, it helps, even if you decide to change everything about it later, like I did with Sonic. He was going to be eating a chili dog, his favorite food, but it felt off theme to me in comparison to the others. So I re-sketched his pose to be tossing up a baseball, which I feel visually fits better but still stays true to his rambunctious personality. 
Sonic's outfit also needed to be redone, so it's kind of a mess, but it works out in the end, I swear. Part of me was hesitant to redraw any of it because I knew it would put me behind schedule, and I've been doing that a lot lately. But on the bright side, it also made this video longer, which means you can hear me yammer even more. Lucky you. Truth be told, I'm not much of a talker. I know I get chatty in these videos, but only because they're videos. Face to face, I'm quite quiet. Unless it's about something I love, like drawing, then I'll talk too much. Whenever I watch someone else's drawing video, I wish they would share a few words about their technique or their thoughts on the content or just anything really. It's fun to watch others draw, but I enjoy getting to know the people and their process too. So I'm creating videos I'd want to watch others create, hoping there are others out there who also like to see drawings get drawn and hear words from the drawer, even if it's a squeaky voice like mine. Here you can see me adding extra details to Amy's footwear. Shoes are a big deal in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, seeing as that's the only thing most of them wear besides gloves. So I made sure to put an emphasis on their kicks and try to capture their personality in them. Sonic gets running shoes and Tails gets clogs and so on. But I picked out styles and colors I'd wear too, because it's way more fun to draw things you like and not just what the character prefers. It might sound crazy, but our moods affect how we draw, so I try to always draw things that make me happy. Now we're going to time travel once more and slow things down so I can show you the final touches for this drawing. A few of you have told me you really love drawing characters, but drawing backgrounds can be a pain, so here's what I do. When drawing out an entire scene would be too much, just adding a block of color behind the character fills in that white space so it doesn't feel so empty. Then to create more depth, I'd love to add a few shapes around the characters to frame them and make them the center of attention. Here I'm doodling stars and dots around Sonic, but you could use anything. Draw these background shapes at different sizes and angles so it flows around the character and doesn't look like we just grabbed a stamp. And try to draw these shapes on both sides of the character so there's a sense of balance. It's a small detail, but I feel like it adds so much. Make sure the colors of the background aren't too bright or overpowering too, otherwise we'll be looking at the background more than the characters. It's obviously not as fancy as drawing out an entire environment, but when comparing it to a blank background, these simple colors and shapes can really do wonders for a drawing. If I had more time, I'd probably add an outline around the characters to help them stand out more or add another layer of background shapes for more depth, but just the absolute minimum is fine too. We don't always have to give every drawing 100% because we're not always at 100% ourselves, so adjusting to your energy levels is vital in drawing too, so you don't burn out. We need to know our limits and when to go beyond them and ways we can pace ourselves so we can keep going. Last year, I took up running to get moving and stay healthy. It's one of my favorite things besides drawing. But when I was just starting out, I thought I needed to run fast, like Sonic the Hedgehog, and I was so sore the next day I couldn't move. The exact opposite of what I was trying to do. And although I was further away from my goal then, it took that distance to realize I was pushing myself too far. Afterwards, I took it slow and worked up to a faster pace. Now I can jog like crazy and zombies can't catch me. And this practice of building up has carried over into my drawings too. Don't rush, don't force yourself, just keep it up and you can go farther. Of course, I still have a long way to go running and drawing wise, but I'm working hard on both so I can get to where I want to be. And if I can do it, of course you can too. And these drawings were just another step forward. Sonic friends and fashion. Thank you so much for staying with me and watching this, and I'll see you next time. Bye!